<sighs> what a day. Glad my boss decided to let me off early. As she gets out of the car and locks it behind her, she starts to feel both nervous and excited simultaneously. I'm anxious to see what all the surprise is about. I wonder what they had in store for me. Before she could finish her thought, music begins to peer out from in the house. <laughs> is that... Setting up a romantic dinner, perhaps? She opens the door and closes it behind her. Oh, well, this is, uh, this is jamming. But I wonder where... Oh, there they are. <laughs> Looks like they're enjoying themselves. You shimmy across the house, being completely aware of your girlfriend's presence. As you do so, you snap your fingers and things around the house vanish as they're replaced by something much more elegant. <gasps> Whoa! How did- You're still unaware of your girlfriend's presence. As you continue to lose yourself into the music, you snap your fingers to the beat every so often, slowly converting the house to a homemade, fancy and romantic setting for a dinner date. Complete with candles already cooked, and prepared food, and excellent romantic lighting. All of which appear simultaneously. Uh, uh, huh? What? Okay. <laughs> okay. This, and this is happening. You snap your fingers one last time, and the music instantly ceases. You then proceed to turn around and become absolutely horrified to find your girlfriend standing there. Oh. Hey, sweetie. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Well, it was kind of a slow night. So my boss randomly decided to let me go home early. Yeah. We should sit. Plus, I really want to know what's going on here. The two of you awkwardly make your way to the living room and sit on the couch. The sounds of awkward silence fills the room until... Okay. Before you start... Can I ask you one thing? Was this the surprise you had in mind? No, well, oh, I figured as much. <laughs> The awkwardness combined with the tension was certainly making the atmosphere unbearable. You decided it was time to come out with the truth. Hmm? <laughs> sure. You can go ahead and ask. Would I believe you if you told me you aren't human? Well... After what I've just seen, I don't know what to believe. So, you're saying... So... So... Are you a wizard? No. Okay. Then maybe a demon overlord. No. An alien? Kind of. 
You're what? <laughs> An entity of sorts. Oh. Well, I was going to guess a mutant of some sort. But that works too, I guess. She seems troubled, so you ask her if she's okay. Sorry, I'm just... really trying to understand this. Show me. Well, okay then. You snap your fingers, and a keychain appears right in front of the two of you. Oh, is that a keychain? And it's from Paris? No way! You snap your fingers again, and a bottle of perfume appears. It's perfume. From Germany? <laughs> I don't speak German, but the name on the bottle seems authentic. <laughs> so you can just summon things? You can also teleport? You clap your hands and vanish in an instant. Where did they- You instantly reappear in this exact same spot. Except now, you're holding an apron. Whoa! Wait! Is that my mom's apron you're holding? Oh man, it is! It's even got that irremovable stain on it. Yes, babe. I believe you. But I want to know, is there anything else you can do? You can shapeshift into other animals or people. Oh, just your current human form so far. Then, can you show me your true form? Oh, no. No, that's okay. I won't force you. Mad? Why would I be mad? Because you never told me. You tell her that you were essentially holding back, and because of your seemingly otherworldly powers and origins. There's so much more you could have done for her, but you didn't. You hang your head down in shame. Oh, baby, come here. I'm not mad. Just astonished, really. I've always felt there was something special about you. Yes, really. Hey, you remember when we first met? I was having an awful day at work. And I decided to go out during break. I didn't care if I came back late, I just really didn't even want to think about that job. Anyway, the park was quite close by, so I drove over there and sat at one of those tables. You came over and asked if you could sit with me because I looked very stressed. You sat down and offered me your sandwich, which, by the way, was delicious. It was way better than the one I had brought with me from home. You asked me how my day was, and I couldn't help but to unload everything. We talked for what felt like hours. It was nice to have someone to vent to about it. And it practically made my day. You ask if you could come and sit and chat with me during my break. From there on after that, you were always so nice. And I always looked forward to coming to the park. 
just to see you on my break or on my days off. We would just sit there and talk. Even though I was the one who did most of the talking. Yeah. It was just me rambling on about random things and complaining about my job. Mostly because of my supervisor. Yeah, now I could see if he was strict, but he was just mean. Especially to me. None of my other co-workers like him. I don't think our boss likes him either. Which makes me wonder why even keep him around. I remember you kept telling me that things will come around and not to let the stress get to me. And one day, bad stuff just started randomly happening to our supervisor. He got a flat tire three times in one week. Then when later his pet dog ran away, he spent nights looking for that poor fella. And that night, when we had that storm, out of all the houses in his neighborhood, his was the only one that a tree had fallen onto. It was smashed like half of his house. Even though I didn't like him, I'm glad he wasn't hurt. He had to move in with his parents until they could finish repairs on the house. Next thing you know, the place was robbed. Yeah, apparently someone had snuck in and took some stuff, but the weirdest part? His parents' stuff was left completely untouched. It was only the things he bought with him that got taken. The police found his missing item some time later, out in the field. It seems to be have thrown everywhere, or most of it was destroyed. They believe they saw a suspicious-looking truck that had his things, but they never found the vehicle or the driver. He then randomly pulled me to the side one day and asked me if I had something to do with it. I was confused. But then he explains he was never a superstitious person. But because of all the things that were happening, he was starting to believe in it. He felt that I was connected to it somehow, and that I laid a curse on him or something. Well, apparently on top of everything else, he was getting these cryptic notes and messages telling him to change his attitude or worse things would come. He asked me to help him break this curse. I honestly thought he lost it. But I decided to play along and told him he must start being nicer to others. Especially us as employees. I really treated it like a joke. But by pure coincidence, once he started acting nicer towards us, all that bad stuff stopped happening. His dog finally came back a little later, and he's been nice to us ever since. You know, now that I've found out your secret, looking back, I take it you had something to do with it, didn't you? You shyly nod your head in agreement, confirming her suspicion. I figured as much. I know it's rather late to say this, but thank you. Whether you wanted to keep your secret, or just didn't feel the need to take any credit, it's nice to know that even back then you were always looking out for me. I also really appreciate the fact that you were always making time for me, and helping me out through some rough days. I always wonder how you seem to find a way to get whatever it is that I needed at the time. But now I know. And I was happy the day you confessed your feelings to me. Because I would have ended up doing it anyway. <laughs> she softly kisses you on the cheek. You can help but blush a little bit. And no, 
This secret of yours doesn't change anything. I still love you regardless. <sighs> yes. Yes, really. Besides, I should take pride in the fact that my mother felt it was important to teach me and my siblings to be grateful for all the things you have. Even the little things. So don't beat yourself up about it. You don't need to be my glucose guardian just to spoil me, okay? You thank her for her reassurance. You're welcome. <laughs> I am glad I could help you feel better. And with that out of the way, I want to know. Are there others like you? There are? Okay. Where do they come from? A dimension that exists outside of time and space. That's where you're from too, right? I see. So, do they have the same powers as you, or are they different? Sorry, I hate to have so many questions, but I'm really curious. You give her more insight about your species and the many different abilities some of them possess. Oh, so they have different powers. Some of them can control the elements like earth and fire, while more powerful ones can manipulate space and time. And the most powerful amongst them can give life or even embody death. <laughs> That's well. Hey, I just realized. Could there be others, like you, on Earth? No. Just you, huh? That does raise the question. Why are you here, then? You withdraw a little, as you were hesitant to give her an answer at first. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't have to. You cut her off and explain your reasoning for coming to Earth. You are one of the few in your species to possess a rare power along with some of your abilities. You used to be a widely known troublemaker back home. A troublemaker? That's surely surprising. You never came across as the type to cause trouble. Well, I'm glad you learned your lesson. But still, I don't think that amount of scolding would warrant you to be banished as a punishment. Would it? What do you mean? You came on your own? So, what made you want to come here on Earth? From the sound of it, you could have gone anywhere you wished. You explained to her that you discovered Earth and a race living in it known as humans. Your curiosity made you fascinated, and so you came to Earth to learn more about them. You ask her if that weirds her out. No, no, that's not weird. I'm just surprised you seem to be very interested in us, especially how we act sometimes. Oh, oh gosh. It just hit me. Wouldn't the others know you're missing? Won't they come looking for you? They won't. Because they don't care. What makes you say that? You admit that your parents aren't exactly the time to raise hell on Earth just to come looking for you. It makes you wonder if they're making an attempt at all. Man, they sound like real jerks. What? No, honey. I don't want you to go back. Not if you don't have to. 
You can stay with me for as long as you wish. I'll be here for you. <sighs> Always. You feel elated by her warm embrace and reassurance. You couldn't help but to crack a joke in the spur of the moment. <laughs> well, honey, you're really something else, you know that? 